If you're new to the world of Ubuntu, you may have some questions like, is it Ubuntu or Ubuntu? Why do you Linux people have so many acronyms? Is it apt or apt-get? Wait, the G in GNU stands for what? It's Arch Linux and why do people keep telling me that they use it? But for the topic of this video, what is an Ubuntu flavor and how is it different from a distro? First, let's quickly define what a Linux distro, or distribution, is for those new to the club. In the Linux world, there isn't one single operating system. There are lots of them, but they all share one thing in common, the Linux kernel, which is the core of the operating system. What separates them is all the layers that are wrapped around this kernel. It's the carefully curated selection of software, package managers, tools, and branding is what separates Ubuntu from, say, an Arch or a Fedora. Okay, but why so many? Well, because people are diverse, and so are their needs and desires. There are distros geared towards home use, and some for enterprise. There are distros built for high-end supercomputers, and distros built for tiny fingernail-sized machines. There are distros for gaming, distros for artists, and even distros for people who really like 2000s pop stars. That's the magic of Linux and open source. If you have a vision and some free time, you can create all kinds of awesome things. Okay, so where does that leave flavors? Well, a flavor is kind of like a distro, but at its heart, it's still Ubuntu. Flavors keep all those central Ubuntu components, like the kernel, the central user land packages, uh, the main software repositories, but with a little extra razzle dazzle on top. Like a carnival apple, you can get one with caramel, candy, or chocolate, but at its center, it's still an apple. Flavors that demonstrate stability, longevity, proper organization can become officially recognized by Canonical, which gives them all kinds of goodies on top of being promoted on the official website. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of what an Ubuntu flavor is, let's give them each a quick taste test. Let's start with our first group. The Desktop Dynamos One of the original flavors, Kubuntu, takes the solid foundation of Ubuntu and combines it with the goodness of KDE and its beautiful Plasma desktop. KDE, also known as the K-Desktop Environment, is more than just a desktop, but a whole ecosystem of applications, utilities, and tools supported by a large and passionate community. With Kubuntu, you have access to excellent KDE applications like Kate, the text editor, console, its terminal emulator, Krita, a digital painting program, and even Caden Live, the video editor I made this video in. Also, it comes preloaded with some common household names like Firefox and VLC Player. If you can't find what you're looking for, just head on over to Kubuntu's Discover app and tap into the huge library of software that Ubuntu offers. As any KDE fan will tell you, a great strength of the Plasma desktop is the staggering amount of customization and tweaks you can make to it. You can add handy desktop widgets, change the color scheme, move the panels around. Seemingly every part of the interface can be tuned to your exact liking. The total freedom of the desktop makes it an appealing choice for newcomers and seasoned Linux veterans alike. Where Kubuntu and its Plasma desktop may feel familiar to a Windows user, the Budgie desktop in Ubuntu Budgie takes some design cues from the Mac OS world. The Budgie desktop that originated in the Solus project has an elegant workflow complete with a sleek top bar, the Plank application launcher, the stately Raven notification system, and a collection of handy desktop applets. You want your weather forecast in your wallpaper? You got it. How about a quick notepad up in the taskbar? It's there. On first boot, you'll be greeted by an excellent welcome screen, introducing you to all the bells and whistles of the operating system. Not only do you get a high-level tour of your new desktop, you also get access to an extremely handy set of tools that allow you to quickly change the desktop theme, install new applets, get your machine gaming ready, and even install a new web browser with a single click. In the application menu, you'll see a lot of familiar faces, Firefox, Thunderbird, LibreOffice, along with many budgie-centric apps. For everything else, the GNOME Software Center is ready and willing to install whatever you need. It may sound odd to call an operating system sexy, but Ubuntu Budgie certainly fits the mold. All the components of the desktop work together seamlessly to create a supremely usable and cohesive computing experience. 
on to the next flavor category. This group is for those who feel the need, the need for speed. Next up on the flavor tour is Exubuntu, or Zubuntu, depending on who you ask. Exubuntu earned its X prefix for its inclusion of the venerable XFCE desktop environment. Arriving on the scene back in 2006, you may wonder, what is this flavor's secret ingredient to longevity? XFCE, who's kind of outlived its original acronym, is a lightweight desktop environment. Like GNOME, the default desktop of Ubuntu, uses the GTK toolkit for its applications, but with a focus on simplicity rather than style. This isn't to say that XFCE can't be visually appealing. It's extremely customizable, and with a little bit of work, you can turn it into a Reddit-worthy desktop. Much like its mascot, the mouse, XFCE is a very small and speedy desktop environment. Opening up the appropriately named Whisker menu, you will find a bevy of popular open source applications like Firefox, the LibreOffice Suite, and GIMP, along with some XFCE family applications like Thunar, the Mighty File Manager, Mousepad, the Text Editor, and Ristretto, the Image Viewer. For all your other apps and snaps, GNOME software is ready to serve. Exubuntu combines the familiar desktop paradigm with a lightweight and stable foundation. With over 15 years under its belt as a flavor, Exubuntu has well earned its good reputation. Lubuntu, much like its cousin Exubuntu, opted for a lightweight desktop environment, LXQT. Built upon the QT toolkit, the LXQT environment prioritizes performance as part of a minimalist approach to the modern desktop. This makes for an exceptionally performant operating system that's blazing fast on a full-fledged gaming PC and a Raspberry Pi alike. This respect for resources extends to its choice of default software. Quickly browse your files with the PC Man File Manager, fill out your to-do list with NobleNote, or launch some apps and do some quick math with the always-ready LXQT runner. For everything else, KDE Discover and the included Muon Package Manager has your back. Without all the flashy animations and transparency effects, applications seem to load twice as fast on Lubuntu. Just take a peek at the built-in HTOP or QPS system monitors and you'll see just how little memory this desktop utilizes. That being said, this Spartan desktop with its flat icon and bright color scheme certainly has its charms. Lubuntu sits atop the flavor podium for being the slimmest of the flavors. Its get-out-of-the-user's-way approach makes it an excellent choice for those looking to revive an old laptop or someone who wants to control every bit of their computer's resources. Let's push that speed to 88 miles per hour and travel back to the future with the retrospective flavors. Gather around the fire, my friends, and let me regale you with tales from the time of Gnome 2. It was a simpler time, when you had to build your dial-up modem drivers from source, and there was a 10% chance that your graphics card would actually work. The good old days. Joking aside, the second iteration of the GNOME desktop is still regarded by many in the Linux community as the gold standard of desktop environments. It was simple, mature, stable, and fast, and it had a distinctive look that set it apart from the contemporary desktops of that era. So when the GNOME devs revealed the plans for the much-anticipated third version, along with its major design changes, let's just say that not everyone was thrilled. So a group of passionate developers who wanted to keep the legacy of GNOME 2 alive forged the Mate desktop. Ubuntu Mate is a flavor built around this beloved, resurrected desktop environment. This isn't to say that Ubuntu Mate is a museum, far from it. The tried and true desktop, along with its suite of applications, have received new features, new names, and are actively supported. Log into the Mate desktop and you'll be greeted by a familiar welcome screen. Like the one found in Ubuntu Budgie, you'll be able to learn the ins and outs of the Mate desktop, along with customizing your theme and installing your web browser of choice. Diving into the classic application menu, you'll find a solid collection of popular programs and tools alongside some official Mate utilities. Browse your files with the Kaha File Manager, take some notes with Pluma, or just rock out to some tunes on Rhythmbox. For everything else, the excellent software boutique provides a one-stop shop for all your package management needs. Ubuntu Mate encapsulates the, if it's not broken, don't fix it mentality. It's a solid, modern operating system that pays homage to its GNOME 2 roots. 
As mentioned in the Ubuntu Mate segment, the introduction of GNOME 3 created quite a buzz in the Linux world. The desktop team over at Canonical saw the shakeup as an opportunity to create their own desktop environment, and thus, Unity was born. This new desktop environment boasted some unique features such as a global menu bar, a system-wide search tool, and a unique left side launcher bar design. Much like GNOME 3, there were growing pains and some controversy around some of the design choices. However, by the time Ubuntu opted to stop Unity development and return back to GNOME for their flagship distro, Unity had become quite stable and garnered a dedicated fanbase. Thankfully, Unity carried on within the community and eventually made its way back to its mother distro in the form of the Ubuntu Unity flavor. Logging into the Ubuntu Unity flavor, a user will find that not much has changed, and I say that as a positive thing. The features that made Unity unique are still present, along with some welcome quality of life fixes and tweaks. Bringing up the iconic dash will reveal a solid selection of applications and the convenient scopes for sorting and locating your files. For those who like to modify their desktop, the nifty Unity tweak tool comes pre-installed out of the box. Ubuntu Unity serves as a reminder of a bold vision that, while not fully realized, was innovative and found new life in the form of a new official flavor. And last but certainly not least, we have what I refer to as the bespoke flavors. Ubuntu Studio isn't your typical flavor. Rather than being based around an alternative desktop environment, the focus is more on its use case. Studio is crafted for those in the creative arts. Artists, designers, musicians, audio engineers, videographers, anyone who creates. The open source world has produced some absolutely stellar creative software for all disciplines, and Studio ships with some of the best of them. You've got Blender and PicoPixel for design, Ardor and Audacity for music production, GIMP and Inkscape for graphic design, and you can find them all ready to go on first login in Ubuntu Studio. The KDE Plasma desktop of Studio is easy to navigate and packaged with a robust selection of common desktop software. And for the legions of other excellent creative tools and utilities, the Discover Software Center is an artist's best friend. Ubuntu Studio compiles some of the best examples of creative open source software into a tailor-made operating system that any creatively minded individual will appreciate. Last, but certainly not least, is Ubuntu Kylin. A great strength of open source is its global reach, and Kylin serves as a prime example. A spiritual successor to the now defunct Kylin OS, the folks at Canonical partnered with the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology in China to create a powerful Linux-based operating system for Chinese-speaking individuals. Kylin uses a custom desktop interface called UKUI that will look familiar to most Windows users. Beyond the desktop, Kylin ships with a whole suite of Kylin branded applications, and the Ubuntu Kylin Software Center gives its users access to a library of open source and commercial software. Another unique element to Kylin is its multiple offered versions, a base and enhanced edition, with the latter shipping with some non-open source software like the popular WPS Office Suite. Ubuntu Kylin is a unique operating system that highlights the global reach of the open source community. While built with Chinese users in mind, anyone can download it and enjoy its distinctive desktop. And so, our flavor tour comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed this bite-sized introduction to the world of Ubuntu flavors. For the full experience though, you need to try them for yourself. So try one, or try them all, because as they say, variety is the spice of life.